Hi, and welcome to Women at Work, The Woe Factor. I'm your host, Mary Eileen Williams, and this show is all about connecting you with experts, tips, and strategies to help you make the most of this very special time of life. Karen Colligan is the founder of PeopleThink, and she's an expert on self-assessment, coaching, and team development. Many people may not be familiar with the term of a self-assessment or self-assessment instrument. So what basically is it? So. Eileen, what, what happens with self-assessments self is it's really about self-awareness. And so what we find with self-assessments, it's a time and place to really begin looking at how do I show up in the world, uh, what do I want to maybe be when I grow up in the world, and really looks at some indicators to show how do I behave? I mean, how do I acknowledge what I'm really great at? How do I acknowledge, you know what? maybe what I'm not so good at and then how do I maybe make sure that I am looking at those gaps and making some determination well if I want to get to a certain place how do I do that I need to have some self-awareness and that's what our self-assessments will do for us well and I know because I looked at your website and found it quite fascinating <laughs> but this actually this whole idea of personality style self-assessment this goes way back isn't that right you know, it's crazy. It goes back to 500 BC-ish. ish. So that's ancient Greece. And what they did at that time, they called it the four temperaments, or they called it the four humors. And what they looked at were bodily fluids and how that really translated to personality. I promise you I am not going to be talking to you about that today. Mm -hmm. So how can understanding our strengths help with career choice, help with maybe getting ahead in our career, or understanding our coworkers better? Right. A lot of people have taken self-assessments before. We know that. And so if I start throwing out terms like Myers-Briggs, if I start throwing out terms like this, there's people who are going to go, oh, yeah, I've done that. What I say to people is self-assessments are for a point in time, and that's today. So if you're starting to say to yourself, you know what, I need to look at a different horizon for me in terms of career, what you really need to do is understand who am I today. And, and what you did three years ago isn't pertinent always. Say if I take a self-assessment and I recognize that in making decisions I need some information, I need data, I need evidence. What will happen is as I'm outbound looking for work then I'm going to look for work that might fill that component of me. I want to do a job that's going to make me go very analytical. I want to find a job that's going to make me really go into the details and build strategy from there. A self-assessment will help me recognize that because if that were true and I go outbound and find out that someone wants me to be a trainer and I'd have to be in front of a room that might not work for who I am today and what skills or values I might want to use for for the work that I might be looking for that is so helpful because really and truly we do change over time and I'm a big believer that again midlife is kind of a pivotal period now. Well in addition to career and career choice I also realize we deal with relationships. Yes we and do. And it can be very <laughs> helpful to understand yes. some of our strengths, maybe some of our blind spots. Uh, that would be in a self, a self assessment that really looks at communication. So one of the tools that I use is called Lumina Learning. What we do is we look at communication styles and we look at 24 uh, qualities, so really our behavioral styles. So what that means for me is this. So if I'm somewhat extroverted, which I certainly am, and I have a tendency to be kind of outbound and talk with my hands as I have been doing so far today, and I really recognize that about myself, Eileen, and I'm having a conversation with someone who might be more introverted or someone who might be more quiet. If I can recognize that fairly quickly, understand who I am, understand who I'm speaking with, then I will be able to shift my style a little bit so in fact I can connect better with that person. It doesn't mean that I'm changing who Karen is because it's our DNA. We are who we are. But what it does mean is I'm being respectful enough of that other person that I'm willing to shift my behavior in order to get the outcome that's going to be a win-win for both of us. And so in relationships, whether it is your partner, your spouse, your um, 
friend, your, your family members, your brothers and sisters, if we can recognize who they are and how they're showing up at that point in time, then we might be able to connect in a much stronger way. Oh, I love that too because that, that connection with relationships is critical in all aspects of our lives. Absolutely. But one of the relationships I think that might be most critical to us, again, at midlife is our relationship with ourselves. So what does, uh, again, self-assessment and particularly the luminous spark that you use, how does that help us identify our strengths and weaknesses in a more personal way? What you want to be thinking about is what do you want to assess? Because believe me, if you go out on the internet, you can assess anything you like. <laughs> so there's a couple things you want to do in terms of assessment. You want to make sure you're talking to some people to find out what either A, they have used, or B, they know are valid and reliable. Because there's some kooky, kooky people out there. We will all know that in terms of um, saying that the, the, they, they might create something that may not be, be good for you. So you just want to pay attention to those kinds of signs. It, so, so if I'm trying to look for my skills or my values, I might look at one set of assessments. What I do with my Luminous Spark is uh, it's really about, as I said, communication and 24 qualities. But, but what, and what I tell people, Eileen, is really be honest when you're doing those self-assessments because garbage in, garbage out. And so if I'm really trying to reevaluate where am I at this point in my life, I have to be honest with myself. And if I'm starting to think about what do I want to do next, whether it's a career move or a volunteer move or you want to create an, a, a new company, what you have to think about is what's going to fill your soul now. So I might be really good at something five years ago and I might have been you know, in corporate America landing it. However, at this point in my life, I don't want to do that anymore. So when you're self-assessing, self-assess for your true today belief in yourself so that you can build your tomorrow based on today. And don't worry about yesterday. Really be thinking about the future. Oh, and Karen, I have to say, I love that phrase, fill your soul now. Because yeah. As I said, we want to be more authentic. We want to fill our soul. Yeah. So this is perfect. I am so excited for people to find out more about what you do. So please tell our viewers where they can go to find out about People Think and some of those wonderful uh, results they might get from doing a little self-assessment. PeopleThink.biz, B-I-Z. We've got tons of resources. So go to the resources page, check it out, all kinds of goodies for you. Karen, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and your expertise about self-assessment with us. I really appreciate it, Eileen. And everybody go out there and take good, good care of yourself. Uh, and I always like to leave you with a little food for thought. Today's words come from the late, great Nora Ephron, who said, and I love this, above all, become the heroine in your own life and not the victim. <laughs>